morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to a, another CI Chit Chat. Um, Mitchell Hora with you here as always. Um, variety of different uh, things we kind of hit on here today, but uh, maybe we'll we'll crank through and make this a, a quicker one. One to uh, start off, and we'll probably hit on a couple of times, but we have uh, Congresswoman Marionette Miller-Meeks joining me on the webinar tomorrow. We've got her for a full hour tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Central. Um, I'm sure Diana will get the uh, registration link in the chat. Amazing, amazing opportunity to speak directly with Congresswoman Marinette Miller-Meeks, ask her questions, um, and discuss Farm Bill, discuss uh, biofuels, discuss 45Z, discuss the chatter happening in D.C. when it comes to, you know, how when are we going to get the rules and what are they going to say and how is this all going to work? So um, she's been a champion for this already and excited to get her thoughts and uh, sit down with uh, with Congresswoman Miller Meeks for a while and uh, hash things out with her. So be sure to join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Uh, with Congresswoman Miller Meeks. OK, let me back things up a little bit um, for anybody that's new. What the heck are we talking about here? Right. So carbon intensity um, at Continuum Ag, we've got our uh, whole suite of tools around carbon intensity, including um, carbon intensity scoring or CI scoring. This is done with the U.S. Department of Energy's GREET model. And the GREET model, um, it's been around since the mid-90s, and it's the gold standard for quantifying the carbon intensity or the carbon footprint of biofuels or of any different fuel. Uh, but specifically within biofuels, it has a component of the, of the calculator that calculates the feedstock CI score. So that would include corn or soybeans or whatever your, your feedstock is. We can actually quantify the carbon intensity of the feedstock. And that's what we're doing at, at Continuum Ag. And then we've got a verification program that we built out called CI Certification. And that's really what our, our business is all about. We're a MMRV company helping to get your CI score third party audited and uh, get that stamp of approval that your CI score is legit. So that as these markets emerge, we're sitting there, uh, at the front of the line to try to maximize the opportunity and really help our friends in the biofuel space maximize the opportunity for them. So I still think this is by far the biggest, biggest opportunity that's out there. Um, 45Z is still due to start January 1. And there's been a variety of IRS indications of about January 1 still being the start date. Hopefully they'll get some of the preliminary rules out and, um, over the coming months and get the preliminary rules out here yet in 2024, but we're not going to hold our breath. We're going to just continue to do what we can, which is get our data organized and get ready to go uh, to help our friends in the biofuel space that as the biofuel producers need data, we're here on the farm, ready to go. We've got our ducks in a row. We're organized and, and ready to help them out. Um, so uh, that's, that's, all we can really do at this point is be ready to go. We've got a good enough understanding of how the math is supposed to work, a good enough understanding of how the CI scores are supposed to work. So uh, we're going to be ready to go and we'll pivot uh, where we need to. But um, I was just on an interview already this morning talking about sustainable aviation fuel and uh, the farmer outlook on sustainable aviation fuel in 2025. And I was like, well, I mean, I'm very bullish on sustainable aviation fuel long term. The U.S. has a goal of 35 billion gallons of sustainable aviation fuel production by 2050. And we have a goal of 3 billion gallons of production by the end of this decade. But last year, there was only about 17 million gallons of SAF produced in the U.S. And in 2024, it's ramping up a little bit. Um, I think maybe another 8 million gallons or so. Um, with Lonza Jet coming online here this year, but uh, we still got a long, long way to go before we're hitting any of these big targets. We're still in the tens of millions, far, far from hitting billions of gallons of, of capacity. So I was telling this uh, reporter that, hey, I'm very bullish on sustainable aviation fuel in the long term. I think it's a huge opportunity. I think we have got to really maximize that, you know, 35 billion gallons. That's huge compared to the current ethanol market of 17 billion gallons. So we're talking massive, massive opportunity there. Uh, and we're going to need corn. We're going to need soybeans. We're going to need canola. We're going to need animal fats and oils. And we're going to need all kinds of different feedstocks 
if we're going to meet that market opportunity, um, it's going to take everybody uh, working together to get this figured out. But those huge opportunities aren't going to be there in 2025. We've got to build out the capacity first. We've got to build these uh, manufacturing facilities first. And there's more and more of them continuing to be announced, which is awesome. So seeing investors coming to the table, we're seeing companies uh, make pledges that they are going to be breaking ground and going to be building sustainable aviation fuel um, production facilities. But um, it's not going to be this huge driver in 2025. You know, hopefully in the coming years, but it's not going to be this short term savior and crop prices are not good and not going to get better because we're going to have a big crop uh, across the mass majority of the country this year is going to have a huge crop. Um, so uh, that SAF opportunity is not going to be the saving grace in the short term. Hopefully some things could get sorted out with trade, but obviously not a whole lot of that on the short term horizon. And uh, we're going to need other other avenues to keep dollars going to the to the farm gate. And uh, that's why I think, again, 45Z is so important um, because it does impact a massive amount of grain and it, it, you know, implemented correctly, it has by far the biggest uh, potential impact on uh, farm profitability and on getting some, some revenue actually going to the farms. Um, I should say revenue going to the farms so that they can hopefully be profitable rather than just, uh, you know, be be operating at a loss um, that expenses are high and corn's only worth you know, three and a half bucks or whatever it is right now. Um, and don't know that it's going to get a whole lot better anytime soon. So, so 45 Z can really um, enable, I think um, that community to continue to, to grow and, and hopefully get close to prospering. Um, and then we continue to build out sustainable aviation fuel over time and look for other emerging market opportunities as well. Um, so happy to dig into this stuff and, and for everyone on, um, you know, definitely put, uh, put your questions and stuff in the chat. Um, nothing too intense to talk about on our side today. We've actually got some big uh, uh, internal uh, company meetings and stuff here today. So um, we'll keep it uh, probably a little bit shorter and sweeter than, than uh, what we typically do. Um couple of things I wanted to maybe hit on. There's been some confusion and stuff within some of the timelines and deadlines and stuff that we are putting out there. So um, I think it's best for me to explain it thinking that with the end in mind. And the end in mind for our verification program, we're working with eco-engineers, um, talking with others as well, but eco-engineers is the, the primary verifier that we work with today. That We are planning on having the first batch or first tranche of CI certificates verified by February 15th. So February 15th, they will have the audits complete and the certificates back and our farmers will have verified CI certificates for every bushel of their 2024 production. So in order to do this by February 15th, 2025, in order to do that by Feb 15, 2025, we got to have all of the final data to the verifier meaning the yield data and any final agronomic data, we got to have all that to them by the end of this year. So by Jan 1, call it. By Jan 1, we got to have all the data to the verifier in order to give them some time to run their final audits and uh, have the reports and stuff done by February 15th. In order to meet those timelines, we've got to submit to them the initial round of data in October. So that is the actual deadline from the verifiers that we've got to get to them all the boundary files and all the agronomic data for this 2024 crop um, in October. So there are some serious deadlines coming up, uh, one month to go, a major, major push for getting all this data pulled together. Um, and especially as we get ready to go to the fields to start harvesting. And now is the time to get your data organized and get it to your continuum ag representative um, if you want to stay on track to get verified, if you don't get your data in by October and you, you miss the ball or miss the boat on this, you can still get verified in a second tranche or a third tranche or batch of verification, which will happen later in 2025. We'll do more than one round of verification. But if you want to be in on this first one 
we got to sit down and get this data cranked out. Um, so be contacting your, your continuum ag rep or your dealer. Um, I'm sure they're swamped. So be patient with them. There's a lot of farmers that we've got to help through this, um, you know, data for, for tens and tens of millions of bushels. It's going to take a lot of work. Um, and this is the first time we've ever done this, you know, first time anybody's ever done this. So, um, it's going to take, take some work, but now is the time to sit down and, and get all this data pulled together. The deadline that we just had last week was just for our normal pricing. Um, so farmers that are enrolled currently, um, you know, you are you are our primary focus to get your data pulled together, to get it to the verifiers in October. If you still want to get enrolled now and saying, oh, crap, I, I still do want to get in on this. I want to be it. I still want to participate. You still can, but there is a rush fee that's on it here now for the month of September. Um, it's an extra three bucks an acre. So we're talking $10 an acre total. Um, hopefully everybody got in um, when it was $7, our normal pricing, um, or even some of you that uh, were in on early bird stuff early on. Uh, but now it's all about getting the data in, getting the data organized in topsoil. All the tools are there and built out. The software is in a really nice spot to facilitate all of this. And we're going to be ready to go. Um, the other piece that uh, that is kind of my baby is now what do we do with the certificates after they get back from the verifier or while they are pending verification? How do we start trading these things and how are we going to monetize these CI certificates? And we've been building on a marketplace to facilitate and document these transactions. It's going really, really well. We've got some amazing projects uh, with some of the biggest software companies in this space, working with massive amount of biofuel producers. We have multiple pilot projects going on with biofuel producers. Uh, so it's been really fun to see the whole system from the farm and the mapping and the quantification and data collection all the way through to trading these certificates into the supply chain um, and actually getting these things monetized. So um, now, of course, ethanol plants, are uh, currently just talking about pilot project pricing and five cents a bushel or two cents a bushel or eight cents a bushel, whatever. Um, and that's all fine and dandy, but um, I think it's really important that as you're looking at those to make sure that you know what are you actually signing up for and is that the maximum amount that you're going to get paid pending the 45Z rules coming out. And I think it's going to be really important to make sure that um, in order to get 45Z to work correctly, we need to have an equitable share between the biofuel producers and the farmers. So as those contracts are being negotiated, we need to make sure that that they are fair. And I think that uh, is going to bring more people to the table. And I think it's going to get us more uh, momentum with the policymakers, get more of them on our side that, hey, we are sharing in this amazing opportunity and uh, we're really taking it and going to maximize it and not squander the opportunity, meaning we're going to get a lot of low carbon grain to the table. We're going to encourage the adoption of regenerative practices on the farm to improve the carbon intensity scores. And then we're going to have an equitable share of the financial opportunity between the farmers, elevators, biofuel producers, and, and the rest. Um, so I think uh, this done well, there's billions of dollars to be, to be had. So let's make sure that we, uh, we do this the right way. So, um, but yeah, of course, still sitting and, and waiting on some of these rules, but getting the infrastructure built out and uh, we're talking about uh, bringing in some additional um, investors and stuff to make this go even further faster too, which is fun. Um, so I don't know a couple, um, just kind of the, the thoughts and updates on, on that side of things. Um. The uh, maybe a couple other deals. So there has been a couple different pilot projects that the ethanol plants are rolling out there. So maybe share some additional thoughts and stuff on that. So um, we know that uh, just over the last couple of weeks, Valero was hosting some meetings, um, Green Plains hosting some meetings, um, other other ethanol plants talking about, hey, we want to get this started. We got some pilot projects going and uh, we want to start connecting with farmers and um, for the most part, they're saying, hey, fill out this farm profile in um, in a software and fill out the data 
and we'll pay you five cents or two cents or something like that for, for filling it out. It's really not based on what your actual score is, um, at least from what I've seen so far. For the most part, they're just paying for the collection of the data rather than paying based on the 45Z dynamics and your actual CI score. And really, it's it's fine. They're just proving the concepts and they're trying to start collecting the data. If you're in one of those programs and you're working with us, we, of course, don't want you to have to reinvent the wheel. We'll help you to get that data to these guys and uh, make sure that that they are linked up and, and uh, sympathetic. What we really are doing, though, is helping farmers to get all this data quantified, get it organized so that when your ethanol plant is asking to collect data, you don't have to fill out their survey. We just send the CI certificate and it's verified. It's already got the verified CI score. It's already got the third party stamp of approval. Done deal. You don't have to re-enter a bunch of agronomic data at all because they don't really need that. They just need what's your score. So the real play here is farmer, you go to topsoil, you get your data organized, you, we get it verified for you. And then whoever you want to send that report to, we just send them the report. Now, if you get audited or they want to do their own quantification, that's fine. And that's where Continuum Ag steps in and we say, okay, this farmer's already been audited. Here's the report. Why do you need to see any more? And if they insist, we work with the farmer and work with the that company and uh, show them what they need to to see, you know, on the part upon the farmer's mm-hmm. approval, of course, farmer owns their data. So it ends up being that uh, if they need to see additional data or they want to run their own calculations, that's fine. It's just completely unnecessary and they're wasting their money at that point, but they can. We already have the data organized, so it's not going to be that hard. And uh, that's why we think farmers in our system should be getting compensated extra or get a higher cut of the 45Z credit because their data has already been audited and their data is organized and more accurate than it being all done after the fact. So um, that drives financial opportunity because it reduces the risk and uh, reduces the cost of audit and of data collection, all this stuff for the biofuel producers. So really enabling this collaboration to happen from the farm to the ethanol plants or biofuel producers. So um, a lot of companies, of course, still dragging their feet saying, well, we don't want the 45Z rules and we don't know what's going to happen. A lot of people talking about we got to wait until we get the pipeline or else we're not going to be able to do anything. I think that is really, really not a good attitude. Um, The pipeline uh, likely ends up getting done at some point, but we only have 45Z for three years at this at this time. You know, it could definitely be extended. But if we don't make any progress, I don't know that the policymakers are going to be all that inclined to extend a tax credit if nobody really participates in it at the beginning. Um, so I think it's going to take some balance there of let's get what we can get, use the in the on-farm practices. And then if a pipeline gets done or a different carbon capture system gets done, then you tack that on and, and rock and roll. There you go. So, um, but in the short term, we've quantified over 300 million bushels and found that there's an 18 point reduction sitting there on the farm, ready to go. 18 CI points of reduction. So a lot of opportunity already there, already ready to go. It's just, you got to make the connection. You got to realize that the farmers are a key part of the solution. And uh, yeah, we can continue to uh, push for for carbon capture. That's fine. I understand the, the math is big. It reduces your CI score by about 30 points if you have a pipeline or have carbon capture. Um, but that's a 30 point reduction on farm. We're seeing right now would be an average of an 18 point reduction. And uh, then you can stack them and do both of them. And there you go. Now you're talking getting close to carbon neutral fuel uh, or with a CI score of, you know, clo- getting close to zero, um, which is obviously the goal and uh, how you maximize these, uh, these opportunities for the federal side and for state programs as well, like California and other, other uh, market programs. So um, as you're, if you're hearing about, you know, your ethanol plant saying, now we're not going to do this. Um, we would love to chat with them. We have a ton of data aggregated at the county level to show that there is tremendous opportunity sitting there on the farms. Um, they just need to, to realize that the farmers are a huge part of the solution. 
And uh, and for the most part, the the higher ups they do get this. The people that are paying attention they understand. Um, and a lot of times, I think our, our farmers kind of get confused when talking with just a local, you know, gr- local grain broker or something. That person um, might not be fully educated yet on how this is going to work, and uh, their their company or their their leadership teams might not have really rolled out what their program is actually going to be or um, thoroughly briefed everyone on exactly how this is going to work. So um, it can definitely be discouraging, uh, but don't get discouraged there. Uh, we just don't know all the rules yet. And all we can be doing at this time is know what you're signing up for. If you are going to sign up for something, take the money if you've got to take it, but uh, know that 45Z rules could come with some st- some substantial additional financial opportunity and make sure that you're not completely cut off from being able to tap into that. So um, it really worries me um, because a lot of farms signing up for stuff and mixed messages and stuff out there about how this, you know, messages coming from biofuel folks that there's not going to be any money for farmers, not until you get a pipeline. It's just by and large, it's just not true. Like if you go after really working on the farm gate, like you really can get there. I've got tons and tons of data about it. I've had this conversation with lots of biofuel producers and there's lots of them that do get it. And uh, there's programs that are already starting to roll out. So um, it can be done on the farm. By and large, you can get the ball rolling uh, just with the on-farm reductions. And then carbon capture or pipelines, whatever, that can be layered on. Um, But it's not going to happen in the next three and a half, four months. So we've got to be, uh, we've got to figure out the on-farm stuff. I think it's the only short-term viable opportunity. So, um, but we got to rock and roll because it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of data. So I'm excited for everyone that is helping out. Um, everyone that is part of this already, um, you know, get your data organized. We need to get all the data in. If you are signed up in our program, we need to get all your data in by October, um, so we've got a month to get all this done, uh, be working with your rep, get your data entered so that we can get you continue to keep you on track for this initial round of verification. Um, got to have all the data by October. So uh, a lot of work to be done. I um, want to circle back again to, you know, obviously, like we're saying, there's a lot of unknowns when it comes to the IRS. There's a lot of unknowns when it comes to upcoming elections and politics, and it is going to make a major potential impact on, on how this gets rolled out. But um, Congresswoman Marionette Miller Meeks is joining me tomorrow, 8 a.m. here on the webinar. Um, she runs the um, um, the um, Conservative Climate Caucus, which I'm going to ask her tomorrow about what the heck really is that group doing and have her explain more of it to us. But um, essentially, Marionette is, you know, obviously a conservative. She's a Republican, um, but is really pushing for a lot of these you know, clean fuels and um, renewable energy and stuff as well and finding good balance in her approach to it. So we're going to talk a lot about that here tomorrow and ask her the question that I always get asked whenever I'm giving a a talk, which is what happens with if Trump gets elected, you know, what happens with 45Z? uh, What happens with 45Z, you know, based on just issues in D.C.? So we're going to, and my take has always been that, hey, people are telling me this has very good bipartisan support. There's plenty of other policies that, uh, you know, if Trump gets elected, plenty of policies that likely could get X'd or, you know, different components of the Inflation Reduction Act that could go away. But 45Z um, is one that they realize is very important and uh, has good bipartisan support. And they're saying that now this one is safe and it's not going anywhere. But again, join me tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Central uh, with Marinette Miller Meeks, and we'll get her take on it because she's the one that's right there at the table. So um, we'll see what she thinks and uh, and let her talk about, uh, you know, we'll let her talk about Farm Bill and some of this other stuff coming out here as well. So, but um, I think with that, um, the uh we'll work on getting things wrapped up here um gary um send me a uh 
Uh, let me, Gary, I'll note you down and I'll get, uh, I'll send you an email and, and uh, nudge on stuff, Gary. Gary sent me a uh, private message here. So, um, but uh, I think um, other than that, we'll talk with Marinette here tomorrow. We'll see everyone back on a chit chat again next week. Um, but I got a lot of work to get done here today. So we'll get things, uh, we'll get things wrapped up, but appreciate everyone staying on. Hopefully we get, uh, you know, ongoing uh, good news. Um, keep me posted if you're here, you know, based on what you're hearing as well. And we'll keep working on all this here together. So with that, have a great day, everyone. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow uh, with Marinette and we'll see you next week. Bye.